thrill of digging up something like the golden mask of Agamemnon, or actually discovering the treasures of Tutankhamun's tomb. About 10 years ago, there was a fashion in treasure hunts. It was set by this beautiful book called Masquerade by Kit Williams. He created a piece of golden jewelry, a golden hair, set with rubies and moonstones and mother of pearl. And then he buried it somewhere in Britain and carefully hid clues in the pictures in this book so that the reader could find his precious jeweled hair. Within the pages of this book, there is a story told of love, adventures, fortunes lost, and a jewel of solid gold. To solve the hidden riddle, you must use your eyes and find the hair in every picture that may point you to the prize. Well, not surprisingly, Masquerade was a huge success. It sold more than two million copies all over the world. And after that, there were four or five other treasure hunt books, like this one, The Golden Key by Don Shaw. Mary Hollinshead was given a copy of The Golden Key in 1983, she told us. Instead of a jewel, the prize was £50,000, which was deposited with the Yorkshire Building Society. Don Shaw, the author, said that it showed the voyage of an Elizabethan called RDE in 1585, just after Francis Drake. And there are other clues, maps and numbers written in Elizabethan English on paper like parchment. I was intrigued. The publishers say it doesn't require a genius to lay claim to the treasure. Anyone with reasonable intelligence could do it. So, I tried. Well, it took two and a half years for someone to work out where Kit Williams' golden hair was buried. It's taken me seven years. I've left home 460 times. I've walked and driven thousands of miles in all weathers. I reckon it's cost me more than £9,000. And how did you find the time for all this treasure hunting? Oh, I took early retirement from my job as a nurse. <laughs> but the thing is, now I think I know where it is. Only Don Shaw has dug the key up, so I can't prove it. She sent us her copy of The Golden Key. Have a look, because in here you can see all the places she's been, all the clues she's found. It's an extraordinary volume describing her treasure hunt. She told us. On page 24, there's a reference to sand core, which is an anagram of core sand, a beacon on Dartmoor near Oakhampton. So I went there with my brother, Peter, feeling like Shakespearean explorers, and started to search the moor. Over hill, over dale, have a bush, have a fire. <laughs> and there I found my first clue. Oh, hell, what have we here? A sawn-off tent peg and a metal measure. Never fear, all that glisters is not gold. Then a penny with a lighthouse on it, another clue. We decoded the date on the penny and knew where to go next. We found rows of old coins. We decoded their message and ended up one day on the moor in freezing cold. It was raining cats and dogs. <laughs> There were two young men there also looking for treasure. They had metal detectors. Well, that gave us hope. From there, Drake's voyage on page 43 led us to the roughest part of Dartmoor. We were there in hail, sleet, wind and rain. There were times when we could hardly stand up. Below! Also available for pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> and then we found it. A golden key. This is it. Not very romantic, is it? But Mary thought it must be significant, so she phoned the Yorkshire Building Society. I know a bank where on the wild time blows. She was having quite a wild time herself, but it was the wrong bank. They said that it was definitely not the key, though it might be a key to the key. Actually, this isn't the right fork either, and nor is this very important bit of string, but by now, Mary was collecting everything because she thought it might be part of the treasure hunt. Her search went on for two and a half years, and during it, Mary fell upon anything on Dartmoor that might be a clue. A horse! A horse! My kingdom for a horse! <laughs> Until on, on November the 18th, 1987, terrible news. Oh, <laughs> Horror! Horror! Tongue nor heart cannot reveal nor name thee. Mary had dug up this, which is a gold 
chop... Don't laugh, this is important. It's a golden <laughs> chocolate chip tracker wrapper. Don't spoil Jimmy! No, it tastes rather nice. Anyway, Mary decided it must be another clue, she told us. It had been buried. Its expiry date was October the 17th, 1987. It was obviously a message that the competition had closed. And it did, it had. Oh, dead, dead. I never called me mother. <laughs> I think the horse is weeping. Anyway, the Sunday Express ran the story. A nationwide treasure hunt for a £50,000 solid gold key was called off yesterday to the fury of thousands of people taking part. The Swindon Evening Advertiser also ran the story. The location of the key is still a mystery, but all will be revealed in a book which Mr Shaw is now working on. Sadly, the book has never appeared, but what did happen was that so great was the fury of all the treasure hunters like Mary Hollinshead that Mr Shaw had to change his mind about digging up the key. He told us... I was going to dig the key up, but then people protested. I had newspapers onto me, so I said, all right, I'll let it continue. We said, but why had you even considered digging it up? Surely that took away the whole point of the treasure hunt. I was being bombarded with calls by treasure hunters. They've pursued me by letter and phone calls, threats, wild accusations. They've even been at midnight with spades trying to dig up our garden. It's crazy. The whole thing is mad. Oh, what a noble mind is here on throne. <laughs> and so Don Shaw did dig up the key on the 1st of January 1989. And the tragic thing is that nobody has had the prize money of £50,000 treasure. Worse still, nobody knows for sure the solution to this treasure hunt, exactly where Don Shaw had buried the key. Not even Major General Sir Jeremy Moore, who officially witnessed Mr Shaw burying it in the first place. The Major General told us... I took a train to meet Don Shaw, who took me off in his car. If somebody took me to the spot, I think I'd recognise it. Don Shaw obviously thought it would be fun for people and a way of making some money. It obviously hasn't come off and has given him a lot of difficulty. It's a shame. It is, because there are still now about 200 people who are very anxious to solve the riddle and find the key. In fact, eight people think they know exactly where it was buried. Explorers all. And thus, we name them for you. Stephen Ship liveth in Sidmouth, Devon, and hath already found a silver longboat hid by the milk marketing board, who were engaged then in promoting the delicacy longboat butter. He is convinced the key resides in Lancashire. Nay, prithee, Roger Morgan is an architect. He saith the key is lodged in a bosky coppice that hath moved from Dunsinane to the Welsh border. He say the key is now untimely ripped and shall be buried back in the mould, or else he feels let down. So also Norman Hughes, the high school head, now he inspected schools and has been 20 times to listen to the He is in 200 leagues there from West Midlands, where he lives to this damn spot. A plague on both your houses. Tis in Essex. Philip Carvey took five long years to calculate, and now he saith he longeth for the chance for someone to pat him upon the back and say, Thou clever chap. <laughs> Jean Emberton knoweth this in Bedfordshire, for it is in 200 ducats she hath spent on petrol or and the key, the key or not the key. <laughs> yes, right, the pricking of her thumbs to Philip's cooks, and now no, it is in Dorset. Aye, there's the rub. Nay. Bill Edson saith Plymouth be the spot, my leash. But soft! What <laughs> word from yonder window breaks? Tis Stuart Curry, and he says the key's in London. Well, the trouble is, nobody knows which one, if any, are right. The other trouble is that all those are real people, and what they're going to say when they see that, they'll sue. Anyway! <laughs> Don Shaw has actually dug up the key now, so we asked him why, after seven years, he can't tell the people and put them out of their misery. He said... Because I've sold the copyright now to Mr Gordon Hook. Frankly, I just wanted to get rid of it, but he thinks he can relaunch the whole thing, and, of course, he wants to be sure that nobody solves it while he's finding new backers. We said, but surely the kindest thing now would be to make the solution public. When we spoke to Sir Jeremy Moore, he suggested you could pick the person who's nearest, give them a percentage of the prize money, and then announce the correct solution. No, I don't want to give anyone the money unless they find the correct spot. I did this originally for a bet, you know. Now I bitterly regret the whole thing. 
The trouble is that all this has become rather an obsession with the treasure hunters. Even Kit Williams, who started it all with his very successful masquerade book, told us... I had 30,000 solutions sent to me, 200 letters a day at the peak. People phone me at all hours. I still get loony letters now. People would stake their whole life savings, marriages, divorces, children's education on an anagram. And when he'd point out that it wasn't an anagram, they'd say, well, it was near. Well, it's, like, it's like pushing a stick into the hornet's nest of the human mind and poking it about. And in this hornet's nest, everybody thinks that they've been stung. So we have tried to sort it out. Don Shaw is going to give all the 200 treasure hunters who hope they've solved the treasure hunt one last month to prove it because he has just reburied the key. He did that last night with an independent witness we've spoken to and the key will stay there unless it's found until June the 30th. Anyone who does find it can claim the £50,000 treasure by sending it to us with the correct solution. After that time, Mr. Gordon Hook is going to try and relaunch the whole treasure hunt, and good luck to him. As Shakespeare nearly put it so beautifully. Go find the key by which thou art besotted, till June the 30th thou hast to get it spotted. And if thou failest by the rude, get knotted. <laughs> available for pantomime, as I said. We think the horse would do rather well at the National. Anyway, let us know how you get on. And incidentally, Mary, the bad news is that it's nowhere near Dartmoor. Simon. Well done.